Hey guys, welcome back. This is Joel from Reboot Studios, and I'm back with part five of the beginner survival island game. Now, in this episode, uh, our plans were to fix our food and water drain rate, which I've already done. As you can see, I've changed it to 0 0.1 and 0 0.2. But for the rest of the episode, I really want to get down to spawning in our character, which is in our prefabs folder. So obviously we want to uh, spawn this guy with code from our prefabs folder. So then we can choose where we want to spawn him and do some things like a main menu and all that before we actually have the character camera um, enabled. This will also allow us to set up uh, dying as well and respawning the character. So I've set the food and water drain rate to 0 0.1 and 0 0.2 as I said. Um, the only thing I haven't done is applied this to our prefab version of our FPS controller. So if I click overrides, apply all, then it will apply it to this one. Another thing we're going to need to do is um, attach our canvas and our event system into our rigid body controller. So if we just put that, drag it in like this so that it's under our FPS controller, then it will be saved in the prefab. And the reason why we're doing that is because these slider components that we added last episode, they're not going to translate when it's not inside the scene. So we need it inside here so we can actually access it easier. So if we override and apply that, you can see that in our prefabs, this stuff comes up now. Um, and it has to be under because it is a heads up display. You want it to work with the character. Um, and if we need to change that later down the line, we will. So now that we've done that, we can remove our character from the scene. Um, and as you can see, no cameras rendering, which is what we want. So now in our scene view, which we'll extend a little bit here, in our scene view, we want to create some spots that our character will be able to spawn from. So um, we want it to just be random anywhere around the map, really. So we're going to create a game object. We're going to say create empty. So just an empty object. Um, and we'll call this spawn spots. Now we're also going to click this and say reset on the transform. And that's just going to put it to zero, 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 um, which is right in the origin of the map. You don't really need to do that. It's just as convention because why not have it at zero, zero, zero? looks a bit nicer. So our next step is to, we're going to just create a cube. Um, and this cube will just put in a nice spot where we want the player to spawn. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to move my scene view over to where a player should kind of spawn. We'll start like, like this. Um, then we'll select the cube and go game object, align with view. Now they're going to spawn like that. Now that we've done that spot, we're just going to control D to duplicate that cube. And then we'll just move to another spot on the map where it might be nice for them to spawn. Um, give them a nice view of the ocean. And then we'll say align with view again. That'll put that one there. So as you can see, I've now created just five cubes all around the map, all in different locations. Um, let's see if they're spread out nicely. Yeah, that's pretty good. So all in different locations, we got these cubes, which represents a spot that the player um, can spawn in. Now, obviously, we don't want it to really be a visible cube um, when they spawn in. We want it to just be invisible. Also, it has this green outline, which means it has this box collider on it. Um, this would cause real issues if we tried to spawn a player in there because we'd be basically putting a collider to a collider straight away, which won't work very well. So for all these cubes, which we're going to select with just with shift and just select all of them, um, we're going to remove the box collider. But for now, this mesh renderer is what makes it visible. We're just going to keep that for now, just so we can still see what we're doing a little bit. And then we'll remove that right at the last step. So these four, um, cubes right here, we'll just chuck them in spawn spots. Um, and that will represent all our spawn spots. 
So now I think it's time to get to scripting. So if we go to our scripts folder and just like before create a new C sharp script, I'm going to call this one menu manager um, because we will use this one for, for the menu as well. Now, obviously it's going to handle spawning at the moment, but um, later down the line we'll, we'll code the whole menu with this and then spawning will just be sort of the last thing or if they die. Um, we'll use the menu manager again. So if we think about what this script actually has to do, uh, it just has to pick a random cube out of all these cubes and spawn the player at that point, which we use with um, the instantiate function, which is a part of Unity. I'll show you that in a second. So we'll begin this uh, script by creating a public game object spawn spots. Now this is obviously just going to be a reference to this one right here because we're just going to access all the children of this spawn spots game object in the hierarchy. We're just going to access these children uh, via code. We're not going to attach each individual one. And the reason why we're not going to do that is we want this to be versatile. If we ever want to, you know, create a new spawn spot, um, we won't have to go on the code and change everything. It'll just work perfectly. Um, if we want to create, you know, like if we wanted to double this, we could just do it by duplicating the cubes. So obviously we're going to need uh, a spot to attach this script, just like with this one. Now we're not going to attach this one to the player because the player is being spawned by this script. So we can't just leave it in there like we did with the other one. We're actually going to have to choose one of these to use to actually put the script on so it's there the entire time. Now you could, I suppose, use another game object, but because this is the menu manager, we're just going to create an empty. And I like to call this just script, all caps, so it's really easy to find. Um, and this is just all our base level scripts, and we'll reset the transform same way. But this is just all of um, our base level scripts that need to be in the scene at all times and always need to be running. So let's just add the menu manager as a component. Um, and now I think we're ready to, to go into it. So if we just save this and come over here, we got this spawn spots. Now we can drag it in and now we have a reference to the spawn spots. So in our start function, which is called straight away, um, when we click that play button. So we're going to create an integer. We're going to call it int number of spots equals spawn spots, which is our, um, our main one. And then we're going to go dot to go to the next section of it. We're going to go dot transform, right? So that's spawn spots transform. And using that transform, um, it's a little bit hard to, to understand, but we're just going to use the transform to find the amount of children. So if we say dot child count, um, and then we're just gonna test this by going debug.log number of spots. Um, and the reason we're doing this is it's just going to show us in the console down here or here. Um, when we start the game, it'll show us how many spots we have and it should be right. So it says five, which is true. We have five cubes, so that's perfect. So now we're going to have to choose a number, a random number between basically zero to five. Um, and the reason we say that is because if we say zero to five, it's going to give us zero to four because it's inclusive. So we'll get rid of this debug.log. And then we're just basically going to create um, a random integer. So we'll say int random spot equals random dot range and we're going to say from zero which is the minimum to number of spots so right now number of spots is obviously five but we're using this number of spots variable just in case we want to change the amount of spots so um, this will basically right now give us a random number between zero and four because if this is five and it's inclusive, it'll either be zero, one, two, three, or four. Um, so that's five things that it could be. 
So now that we have this random spot as an index, so between zero and four, we're gonna use that to find a game object. So we're gonna say game object spot. So this is the spawn spot that we're choosing. Actually, we'll just call it, we'll call it chosen spot. Um, and this is gonna be in spawn spots, which is our main one, dot transform again, dot get child. And then we need to pass in an index for this one. So we're trying to get a child of spawn spots and it's gonna be one of these but it needs to know which one. So this one would be zero, this one would be one, two, three, four. So we just have to choose one of them. Now we've got our random spot number, which is between zero and four. So we'll just pass that in, random spot. And then that should give us, oh, so uh, this is a little error by me. This is actually giving us a transform for a child. So we have to just say at the end of this dot game object. And then we just have to do that because this whole thing will actually give us a transform, but we're trying to create a game object here, game object chosen spot. So we're going to grab basically the transform of whatever one it picks, which is this. And then we're going to say dot game object, which will bring us back to the actual object itself instead of just grabbing a single component. So we're going to create another variable, public game object player object. So this is our player. Um, and then we will save this, go to our scripts object, and we see player object here. Now we're just going to chuck in our prefabs version of that. So that's what's going to spawn when we say spawn player object. So that's our reference again. So to spawn our player, we use this function that's built into Unity. It's called instantiate. So if you just say instantiate like this, um, it says clones the object original and returns the clone. So we just need to use instantiate and then chuck in our player object as the game object that we want to instantiate. And then we actually need to give it a position and rotation value. Uh, that will be put into the transform of the player object because right now it's zero 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 um, we want to spawn it at the spot at the spawn spot we've chosen so we'll say chosen spot dot transform dot position and now actually now that i'm looking at this we can just change this to transform and get rid of this dot game object because all we're really doing is grabbing the game object and then getting it transformed back anyway. So now we can just use chosen spot dot position, chosen spot dot rotation. Um, and that should do us. So that will instantiate our player object, which we've refed it, referenced in Unity, um, at our random spots position and our random spots rotation. So as you can see, our player has spawned in at one of our random spots. Um, this one's the one in the middle that it's spawned in at. Now let's restart our game and see if it puts us at another spot. Yep, so this one's by the beach. Um, works well. Now we can actually get rid of that, the cube, the mesh renderer part of it. So now we can't see our cubes. So we'll just delete this for all of them. Um, and now they will, they'll be invisible, but they'll still be a spawn spot. So just like that, we've created a spawning system, a random spawning system for our player. Um, now, obviously we have this in our start function, which is not really how we're going to want it when we get the rest of the menu started. We're going to want them to click, you know, new game or something like that. And then it will spawn the player in. So to make it easier when we're making our menu, we're going to take this out of the start function and we're just going to create another function um, that we can call at any time. So just
just like in our previous episode, the way we do that is with a void function. So if we say void spawn player, and then we just cut and paste all of this into there, just like that. Now, right now in our start, we're obviously going to call spawn player. Um, so all of that gets run the same way. However, when we have our menu, we're obviously going to want to put this in a function that runs when they click a button. So that's it for this episode. Um, we're really starting to make some progress. Uh, the, the heads up display is not yet finished, but we got some more little things to do before we can really start fine tuning the game. Um, so thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.